Let's see. Are we going to show up today? Am I going to do it right? That is the best question, if I'm going to do it correctly. So we're loading up. I won't know for another 30 seconds. I wonder if this part is recorded. Is this part recorded or not? I'm not even sure about that. Okay, Gene Queen, first one in the chat. Let's go. We got at least one person here. Way to go. Okay, we got some people. We are ready to rock and roll. Very good, very good, very good. Very good. All right, we are rocking and rolling. So we got some people coming in the chat. Very good. Where is everybody from? So far, the furthest away is Oregon. Let's see if we can get somebody further away than Oregon. If you guys have questions, jump in, get into the queue, because as you know, when I beat the chat, the show is over. So get in the queue, pop your questions in there, get in early, so that way we can rock and roll. Um, as always, if you guys have any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat. If we've answered them before and you need more clarification, I am more than happy to do so. Um, anything you guys need help with, I'm here for you. I don't need nothing. Don't need anything. Just need good questions. Just need your attention and just need you to be actionable on the things that we talk about. So that way you can run your business, you can make some money, and then you can improve whatever you got going on. So I hope everybody is doing well. As always, we are here. I'm glad everyone is jumping in. We do have a world record to beat. The world record to beat is 661 people in the chat. So tell your friend, tell your neighbor, tell your ex-wife, tell somebody. Join the chat. We have 661. That is the world record championship. And that's from three weeks ago. For the last two weeks, we have not beat the record. So Thank you, everybody. Today, there's probably going to be a lot of Macari questions because Macari has shaken the reseller atmosphere to its core by eliminating seller fees. They are going to have the buyer pay the fees, the seller pay no fees. However, they are going to now allow people to send items back within the first 72 hours of receiving them. So I want to ask the chat, what say you? What say the chat? Is no seller fees good or bad for reselling? What say the chat? I want to hear from you. Is no seller fees good or bad for resellers? I want to hear what you have to say. And I'll share my thoughts afterwards. Paul is in spring break, Dustin, Florida. It's very beautiful up there. Damon says, hit me up when you go back to Lake Worth. Um, do you think eBay reselling will be live and well in five to 10 years? Of course. Reselling is one of the oldest occupations in the world. They, they were reselling when they had markets in biblical times and before that. So reselling will be around in some sort of capacity forever. Will it be the exact same way it is today? Absolutely not. But reselling will never go away. It will always be here. Simon from London, check out the Gentleman Marketeer from London. He puts out some great YouTube videos. He's always in the UK call with James Bold Fines. Check out those guys. Thank you for Simon for coming through. We got my man Third Eye Fine. Zach, he's coming through. He puts out some nice videos too. Shout out to Zach. Um, 2434 Collectibles, what do you think about the Macari news? I want to hear from you guys first. I want to hear it. Are no seller fees good or bad for resellers? I want to hear your thoughts. Um, Danny says, UK seller from the group quitting his job in three days. Let's go. Everybody give Danny a let's go. He's going full time. Congratulations on him. Um, give us your honest thoughts about the Macari changes. Everyone wants to talk about Macari. What's going on? How did you get workers for your retail store? Do they make the buying and pricing decisions? All right. Good question. So, I know it would be easy to find workers for the retail store because you're going to get people that come very often, kind of like um, they like to hang around the store. They, they, they like clothes. They like vintage. They come every single day. And those were the people that I targeted. So when I first opened, there was a couple guys who came every single day because we was putting stock out. I was over there putting stock out. And, um, you know, I talked to them. They love the store. They love vintage. And it was very easy to find them. So 
um, for that aspect, you know, they were hanging around and I knew there would be some hang around guys. And those were the ones that I targeted. And I have a, a great couple of guys that do excellent with the store. And in six years of having the store, I have never had to ring the cash register. So we've never had to been, we've never been closed. Cash register has been running. And luckily for me, I've never had to go over there and work. So very shout out to those guys who work at the store. They do a tremendous job. Um, do they make the buying and the pricing? We don't do a lot of buying over there. Um, simply because I get unlimited inventory for $4 each is my average buy cost. And when people bring stuff to you, usually they want eBay price or retail price or a tad under that. And there's like no room to make money. And when I can get grails for $4, when I can get regular stuff for $4, like it's not, it's not really always in my best interest to purchase stuff um, because the price is too much. And I could get a better price just dealing with myself and I get unlimited stock already. So I'm not hurting for stock. Um, I already have unlimited stock for the best price in town. So um, I really don't buy from people too much. Um, but do they do the pricing? They do do the pricing. Of course, if they have a question, I'm always there to answer it. But I just give them a stack of clothes every single week and let them bust out the prices. Um, do you add extra costs to the shipping? Um, to cover fees and materials for shipping, or do you charge them what it costs and take a hit? So for me, I am under counter price, um, but I'm a little more than what the label costs to take in account for things like that. Um, make a couple dollars on shipping, and that helps with you know free returns, paying for those labels. That helps if in the event that a buyer does misuse returns, that also helps in, in that event. Um, so I do make a little bit of money on every single label. Um, just to cover those things that you're talking about there. Um, do you have a block list on your eBay? Is it bad for business? I do, but I, it's very, very sparingly. I answered it a couple of weeks ago. I only block people that return items more than one time for reasons that are preventable, which meaning they didn't do their due diligence. So if someone buys an item, they return it wrong size, it doesn't fit, no problem. If they do it twice and they didn't read the measurements two times, then that one will go on the block list because I take the time to post the measurements. They need to take the time to do the due diligence. So you can block whoever you want for whatever reason you want, whatever you want to do. Um, but for me personally, that's pretty much the only reason why I would put somebody on the block list. Um, is there a difference from changing your handling time from same day to one day and vice versa? Currently have it at same day. Will it affect if I change it to one day? All right, great question. So if you change it to one day, and you have free returns, then you are eligible for Top Rated Plus. Top Rated Plus will give you a 10% discount on final value fees. It gives you increased placement in search. It gives you the ability to withhold up to 50% if a buyer misuses returns. And it does give you a little bit of feedback protection. It used to give you the best feedback protection, but not anymore. So you will get increased um, placement in search. You will get a 10% final value fee discount. Um, and you do, you do get the ability to withhold up to 50% if a buyer does misuse returns. Um, if you are not doing free returns and you just go from two-day handling to one-day handling, technically speaking, you will get an increased um, placement in search because one-day handling beats two-day handling. So you will get an increased placement. However, is it going to move you into a mansion? Um, the answer is no. It's not going to move you into a mansion to go from two days to one day. So... Um, for me, my store, I've always been on same day or one day shipping. I've been doing that for as long as I can remember. Now that we're doing some traveling, my wife's store, she went from one day to two day and she's noticed no difference in her sales. So I'm still at one day because I have someone to pack the items. Um, she doesn't have anyone for her store to pack the items and she has no noticeable difference going from one day to two day. Now, if you're at five day and go to one day, sure, three days and go to one day, maybe it's a little bit more of... Um, more pushing the needle, but to go from two to one to say that's going to move you into a mansion, probably not. To go from two days and then be eligible for top rated plus, I think that's worth it if you are able to pull it off. However, don't go one day shipping if you cannot do one day shipping because you're going to rack up some late shipment defects. You're going to have some un unhappy customers and that's not what you want to do. So only commit to one day handling if you are able to do it. Don't overextend yourself. And if it will give you the ability to go from top rated to now top rated plus, I think that there are some benefits and that there, there are some incentives to doing that. Uh, Mel says, new to eBay. eBay is holding her funds until seller returns the item. They have not shipped the item yet. 
It's been two weeks. He is offshore. I really need to understand the return process. Very good. Um, so once a buyer wants to return an item for any reason, they're going to open up a return request. Once they open up the return request, the money is now held by eBay. When the buyer returns the item, it's going to show confirmed tracking that it was returned. You will issue the refund. The money will go back to the buyer. If the buyer does not return it in a timely manner, and it will tell you right on the return request at what date the buyer must return the item by, the case will close. It will close in your favor and the funds will be released back to you. Uh, Mandy says, in addition to the free fees, Mandy's going to charge, or Macari's going to charge $2 fee for um, the withdrawal. I think it's $3. And then if you want, um, if you want it faster, then, then it's a more charge. So, they're going to charge you to get your money, but there's no fees. There's no fees, guys. I want to hear your thoughts. No fees. The buyer pays fees. What are the thoughts? Is that good for resellers or bad for resellers? I want to hear from you. Are no fees good for resellers or bad for resellers? I want to hear from you. Some people are saying fantastic. Laura is going to listen to the podcast while she prepares dinner. Thank you, Laura. You listen to all the podcasts. I appreciate you listening to the podcast very much. So um, we have a great podcast coming out on Friday. Lock in, turn on notifications. We have Phoenix Resale on the podcast on Friday. He does over a million dollars a year reselling. And he just put out a video a month ago that has 2.4 million views. So he's a rare bird. He crushes it reselling and crushes it on YouTube, and the podcast just keep getting better and better and better, and the Phoenix Resale Podcast is one of my favorite podcasts to date. I had a whole sheet of notes based on that conversation, and I think you guys are going to have some great takeaways from that one too, so definitely turn on notifications. That one's going to come out Friday, 12 noon Eastern Time. Great conversation, one of my personal favorites. Um, Bygone says local thrift just has insurance changed their policy. They can no longer accept toys, discuss with them about taking all of them pitfalls. How do I improve the process to do this? All right. So yeah, there are some legalities to accepting toys, especially when it's on the recall list or it's small items. That is a choking hazard. So I can see some sort of liability with that. Um, it's all about communication. And we spent a lot of time talking about this this week especially in the 100K call. And a lot of times we have to meet somebody that will move our business to the next level. So as you guys know, I have been traveling the state of Florida, going to flea markets that I have never been before. I am doing this because if I go to my local flea market where I've been going for 15 years, it's like shooting, a, shooting fish in a barrel. I know everybody over there. I'm the president over there. I, I've been making relationships, doing deals there for over a decade. So now I go far away, no advantages, just me, my knowledge, boots on the ground. In the last two videos, I've gone to the same flea market two times. I went the first week and got a bunch of Lululemon and got a bunch of Lily Pulitzer, few thousand dollars in profit. I went to the same flea market the following week and I got a bunch of Lululemon and a bunch of Lily Pulitzer again from the same person and I got 80 hats from a different person who the week prior I got around 80 hats as well. So I'm starting to develop those relationships. And the Lululemon and the Lily Pulitzer was $5,500 in profit. I met one person and that one person would revolutionize my reselling business just on that relationship. So a lot of times meeting one person or finding one honey hole or going to one store can totally change the trajectory of what our reselling business is. And every single time I go to the flea market, I do it as an educational tutorial on how to establish these relationships. What do we have to say to them? What can we do to help benefit them, which as a result is going to benefit us? So if they are getting toys and they cannot deal with them, that is a great thing for you to step in and say, hey, I would love to be the toy guy. So for my brick and mortar store, if somebody walked in and they said, hey, I'm looking for a bulk deal. I'm a reseller. What can you do to help me out? I already know. At my brick and store locally, the most difficult thing for me to sell is size 2X and above. If someone walked in and they said, hey, I am a reseller. Do you have any product that you want to sell wholesale? 
2X, 3X, 4X, anything 2X and above, I would be inclined to do a deal because on the local market, I have a hard time selling that. On the worldwide market on eBay, maybe you won't have such a hard time selling it. So that right there, that 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 is a, a, a pain point for me that could be a beneficial point for you. So if they can no longer accept toys, that is a pain point. They are going to get toys. Talk to them, communicate with them. How can you help them? What can you do? Just like Phoenix Resale said in the podcast, is there a deal here? And it sounds like you have the makings for there to be a deal. They have a pain point. You can alleviate it. Maybe they give it to you for free. It's so much of a pain point. Maybe you have to pay them a couple of dollars. It's so much of a pain point. But you have to go in there and you have to communicate with them. On all of my videos, pay attention to how I am communicating with the vendors. Pay attention to the cadence. Pay attention to the respect. Pay attention to the words, words that I'm using because every single flea market that I go to, zero advantages and every single flea market, I walk away with phone numbers and I walk away with people who want to do deals with me because I am projecting myself as a professional. I'm projecting myself showing I have money. I'm projecting, projecting myself showing that I mean business. I'm not going to beat them up. I'm not going to negotiate. I know what I'm doing. The deal is smooth. It's no back and forth. It's fast. Here's what, here's what I want to pick up. You tell me the price. It's paid. Do you have more? Great. I'll buy more. Do you not have more today? Great. I'll see you next week. And I just do that forever into eternity. And eventually you have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 people at the flea market holding stuff for you. And if you have 50 people holding 10 items, 20 items, 50 items, it's no wonder you can end up with thousands of pieces per week and you can list 120 items a day as I was doing. So every single business will have a pain point. If you could be the stopgap in that pain point and alleviate the pain point, that's when it becomes a beautiful symbiotic relationship, but it starts with communication. You have to talk to them. They might say no, they might say yes, but you have to talk to them and keep talking to them. Um, Very good. P Some people are saying fees are good. Some people are saying fees are not good. Will Macari buyers notice the fees? That's what Tina is saying. Lyndon is saying it's great. The gentleman marketeer, Simon, is saying he's happy to pay fees as long as I get traffic and eyes on the item. No seller fees are better for the seller, worse for the buyer, Bygone is saying. So I, I want to hear from you guys. Are seller fees bad for resellers? That's what I want to hear. I want to hear what you guys have to say. Also, we need all the questions. Give me all the questions you guys got. Green-Eyed Moose says, big, big picture. I don't see much of a difference. Buyers pay the fees technically anyway. We increase our price over time to offset costs of new fees. Is that true? Have we been able to increase our costs over time or have the costs come down? Green-Eyed Moose says, we just increase the costs. Across the board, have you increased your costs as a reseller or have you decreased your costs as a reseller? Michelle says they have a very heavy autographed jersey and can't find one exactly like it. Was told it was special edition. Is there a site I could identify, authenticate it for me? Sure. So um, there's a couple sites. One is PSA. One is Beckett. You can send it in. They will authenticate it. They usually charge per signature. So if it's heavily autographed by a whole team, it's going to be pretty expensive. So without a COA, a cert certificate of authenticity, Technically speaking, you cannot sell it as authentic, autographed, whatever, whatever. You can sell it and, you know, the buyer can do their due diligence. The buyer can purchase it. The buyer can take the gamble. That part is up to them. Um, a way to figure out who the signatures are, what team it is, what time frame, whatever sport it is. And let's just say for this example, it's baseball. You find the team and some players are going to sign with their number. They'll say, Tug and Sports, number 62. So we have number 62. And since it's a baseball jersey, we can go to baseballreference.com. And that, that is the database for every single player that has ever played a single pitch in baseball. They have the same thing for the NBA. They have the same thing to, for the NFL. You identify the team. It's a Braves jersey. You identify a number under a signature, number 62. 
You go to Baseball Reference and you and you you search all Atlanta Braves players that wore number 62. And you should be able to make out a first letter of a first name, first letter of a last name. And you match up number 62 with a T and with an S. Number 62 is Tekken Sports. Great. We have an idea of who this is. Then we go to the Google machine. We go to Google Images and we type in Tekken Sports signature. And once we do that, we can match up. Is this the way that this person, number 62, that I've matched up with this name, is this his signature? If it is, great. Then you find another person with another number and you do the same thing. Number 18 is Michelle, reseller project. She's in the chat. Then we go to the Google machine, check out Michelle's signature. Bam, we've matched up two signatures. Now what you do is you go to both of those players, Tekken Sports and Michelle, and you look, what years did they play for that particular team? Was it in 1997, 1996, 1992? Did they overlap three or four years? Great. Now we can narrow it down to what decade, what era it was. And now we have, let's say, 1996, 1998. We can open up the roster for the entire 1997 Atlanta Braves team. And then we can start matching up the signatures from that on the jersey and Google Images. So we've done that. Great. We are still not 1,000% certain that these are authentic autographs. However, a heavily autographed jersey, it's all going to be in different pressure from the marker, uh, maybe even different markers, different handwriting slants. Odds are it's legitimate. However, we have no certificate of authenticity. Photograph the item. And for these items where we can't find an exact comp, they are one-off items. And with one-off items, they have no price. The price for a one-off item is what the buyer is willing to pay. So you go to eBay and you, and you try to find something as similar as possible. Atlanta Braves autographed jersey from a, a as close time frame as possible. And then throw up a number, wait for a best offer, consider it when they come in. Again, one-of-a-kind items have one-of-a-kind price. It's worth whatever the buyer is willing to pay. Nick says, if a buyer accepts an offer and never pays, once you cancel the order, does that still show up as a sale on eBay at the end of the year? It does not. Um, they've never paid, so you have no money. Um, Thrifty says, no fees is good. The return policy is no. So no fees is good for resellers. Return policy, bad for resellers. Very good. Retro Rogue says they got a negative feedback for item didn't fit too small. They have measurements in the photos in the description. I called eBay. They wouldn't take it off. What do you think I should do? Um, they have been um, the opposite of very lenient in removing feedback. A couple of months ago, six to eight months, they would remove everything. Prior to that, they would remove nothing. So feedback ebbs and flows, ebbs and flows. Sometimes they are very lenient. Sometimes they are not. We are in the period where they are not. I don't even try to get my feedback removed anymore because it is very, very difficult. And the thing that I loathe the most about reselling is begging eBay to take off a of feedback that is totally unjustifiable and they refuse to do so. So what you can do is you can contact the customer, try to work it out with them. Hey, I'll do this. You know, um, please, I apologize for you receiving an item that didn't fit. I have 30 day free returns. I have returns. Please open up a, a return request. I'm happy to accept the item back and give you a full refund. Once they open up that request, when they send it back, once you issue a refund, then the feedback will automatically be removed. Once they open up that return request, if they never send it back, once the case is closed, that feedback will automatically be removed. Um, if there's no communication with them, um, you can try to call eBay again. Maybe you get a different wet rep. Maybe you don't. Um, if they if they cannot help you on the phone, you can go to eBay for business on Facebook. You can send them a message on Messenger. See if they will help you out. If they will not help you out, you can go to Seller Hub. And on the top right hand corner, you can go to Seller Help, Seller Tools. You can click that and you can try to have the automated tool help you remove it. But they are very, 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 um, they are very strict, very stern on feedback now. Um, Brianna says your wife has her own eBay store. That's right. She's had an eBay store for over 10 years. Um, my first year of eBay talked to them yesterday, told them I am top rated, but said that's the top tier. I asked about plus and she told me I am at the top. 
So there is a difference between top rated and top rated plus. We covered that right at the beginning of the call. Top rated is top rated, top rated plus. So top rated is assessed per your metrics on the seller metrics page regarding um, out of stock cancellation, shipping on time, scanned on time, um, and then any sort of uh, uh, defects for cases closed without seller resolution. If you meet or exceed anything in those categories, then you are top rated. Top rated plus is meeting or exceeding anything in those in those categories, cancellations, case closed while seller resolution, um, shipped on time, scanned on time. You have to meet or exceed those categories. And also you have to offer one day handling time or less and any version of the free returns. If you do offer any version of the free returns, one day handling time or less, meet or exceed anything in those four categories, then you're top rated plus, which gives you a 10% discount on final value fees, um, gives you increased visibility placement in search, the ability to withhold 50% of refunds, and then some feedback protection, not as much, but some. Um, and this is assessed on two different ways. If you sell 400 items in a 90-day span, you are you are judged on a 90-day rolling period. If you sell less than 400 items on a 90-day span, you are judged on a one-year period for defects. Um, Delilah says she made the live finally. Very good. We do this every single Wednesday night. How do you handle dealing with employees? I need more context for that one, Will. Need more context. Um, so Private says, I think you misunderstood the question. I understood the question. If I changed it from same day to one day, would I notice anything different? No, it, it, it's not going to be a humongous difference, not going to move you into a mansion. It's not going to be a humongous impact. It will be totally fine. Um, no fees are great for resellers. A lot of you guys love the no fees. I love it. What's the best way to get back on the algorithm? Um, to get back consistent, that is the best way. And a couple of weeks ago, we um, we talked about that. We shared a graph. And that is the number one best way to get back on the algorithm is to make sure that we are being consistent and make sure that we are doing what we are supposed to do. Um, I'll share that graph again right now. And this is the best way to get back on the good graces of eBay's good side. So here we go. Let's fire up the screen share. Exit this out. This is a graph of somebody who did not list since January 1st to March 1st. That would be 60 days. They did not list for 60 days. They have 3,000 items in their store. 3,000 items in their store. They started listing again on March 1st, 15 a day. March 1st, they listed 15. March 2nd, they listed 15. March 3rd, they listed 15. March 4th, they listed 15. This store right here had 3,000 items. This store right here had 3,015. This store right here had 3,030. This store right here had 3,045. This store right here is the same exact store as this one. This store right here is the same exact store as this one. On this day right here, this third day, they sold 31 items on this day after 60 days of not listing three days of listing, and look at the organic traffic. The organic traffic has what? One, two, three, four times, 400% more organic traffic just due to activity. No activity, eBay doesn't give you traffic. Active, eBay gives you traffic. Why did this person not sell 31 items on this day? Why? It's the same exact store here as it is right here. Same exact store, give or take 40 new items. Same exact store. But on this day, probably sold nothing. On this day, after three days of being active, sold 31 items. How do you get on eBay's good gracious? That's how right there. You be consistent. You be nice to the algorithm. That is how you get back on eBay's good side with the algorithm. Chat jumped on me. Let's catch up. Where are we at? Uh, some people are saying good. Some people are saying bad. 
I'll tell you what side I'm on. Are no seller fees bad for resellers? That is the question of the day. Are no seller fees bad for resellers? That is the question of the day, guys. Um, Catching up in the chat. Thank you very much. Which is better? Oh, Philly Flipper in the chat. He says, do you go to flea markets? I do. I saw Philly Flipper and Webster. I saw him. He's a big guy. He's like six foot six. I saw him out there. And he said I was very polite. He said he, he was blown away and shocked by how polite I was and how courteous I was to all the other vendors and all the other shoppers. Because he told me someone had some vintage shirts. And I said, nope, there's already people looking at them. That's against the rules. I got to keep it pushing. Those are the rules, Paul. Those are the rules. Um So Jewel said, sorry, she missed the conversation. Macari is putting the fees on the buyers now. Not sure I understand. They are. Uh, Macari is now switching to no fees for the seller. They are going to charge you a couple dollars, two or three bucks to withdraw your money. But there is no fees for the seller. The buyer is going to pay the credit card processing fee. Um, but they also are allowing returns now within three days of receiving the item. So I'm asking. Is this good or bad for resellers? Are no fees good or bad for resellers? Mel says, not accepting returns versus accepting 30-day returns. I currently have not accepted returns and customer opened a case because she didn't want to pay shipping. eBay okay to return. So even if you have no returns, a buyer can still return the item. They can select item not as described and eBay will force you to accept the return. It doesn't matter that you have no returns. The item was not as described. This is not the buyer's fault. This is your fault as a seller. They will make you accept the return. The item will be sent back. You will issue a refund, and then you can resell the item if you wish. So if you have no returns, they, the buyer can still return an item. So if you have no returns, if you have buyer pays returns, the buyer is more inclined to select item not as described to force the return and or force you to pay for the label. If you have free returns, there is no incentivized reason for the buyer to select item not as described. They could be truthful and they can select wrong size doesn't fit. They can select don't need, found a better price, change mine. They can select an actual buyer's remorse reason. So if you are looking at your seller metrics, and your thermometer on the seller metrics shows your returns for item not as described approaching the very high section where they can assess you an extra final value fee of up to 6%, then maybe take an audit of how many of these item not as describes are maybe false, where the buyer is forcing the return because you don't accept returns, or the buyer is claiming item not as described because they don't want to pay for return shipping Therefore, they're, they're, they're jamming you up, and now you have to provide the label. So if you offer free returns, which I am a big proponent of free returns because free returns is best for the customer, and that's how I run my business, whatever is best for the customer. I do not run my business on what is best for me. I run my business on what is best for the customer. I have been doing free returns for well over 10 years. Because I never wanted a customer to be mad, to be upset over spending 3 or $4 for a return label. So I am more than happy to pay for the return label, have a happy customer. I think overall, it's better for the platform. So if you have no returns, that doesn't mean anything. Somebody could just open up an item not as described and you will take that return back. Um, how do you drive more customers to your retail store, specifically travelers? We get a lot now and only 15 minutes away from the airport. Um, so my store is located about, I don't know, 300 yards from the high school, right in the middle of the high school, the gas station and McDonald's. All the kids walk from high school to McDonald's every single day. I picked that location because it's right in the middle of McDonald's and the high school. So that was a strategic choice, a strategic location where the kids have to walk across my store every single day. Hundreds and hundreds of kids walk past the door every single day. Some come in and spend money, some don't. That's okay. 
I just want them to know that the store is there. They see the store every single day, which is great. Sometimes they come back with their parents. Sometimes they come back with their friends. Sometimes they come back with their siblings. So that was a, a strategic decision. What else I do is I did um, for, for a good while run Instagram ads. And you can run targeted Instagram ads starting very cheap. At that time, you can start with 35 bucks. Um, and you can target a radius. So for my brick and mortar store, I don't need to advertise to Michelle who's in Idaho. She is not a customer for my local brick and mortar store. I need to advertise in a five mile radius around my brick and mortar store. And that is the radius that I selected. You can also advertise based on preferences and based on keywords. So I advertise only to this demographic, you know, 18 to 35. I don't need to advertise to old people because that's not my demographic for a vintage store. 18 to 35, ones who like vintage, ones who like particular music, ones who like particular TV shows, and ones that are in, within five miles of my store. So you could do Facebook ads if your demographic is there. My demographic is not on Facebook. They're too young for Facebook. So if I was going to advertise, I would advertise on Instagram and I would advertise on TikTok for my business. If your business skews older, then maybe you don't want to go on TikTok. But the targeting ads by distance from the, from the location and by keywords or what they into, what their interests are, that was really helpful for me. Um, Farmer Jones says, everyone is taking a bite out of reseller profits. You simply need to sell more, in my humble opinion. Sell price must reflect fee buyer pays too. Everyone is taking a bite of our money. They are all coming for us. Farmer Jones, they're all coming for us. How do you do it to post constantly without burnout? I don't get burned out. My wife is in the chat. I'm 100% pedal to the metal, all gas, no brakes, 24 hours a day. I wake up, I rock and roll. I don't know what burnout is. Never took a nap in my life. Never drank coffee. I just rock and roll. It's good and it's bad. I just rock and roll. I, I've never suffered from burnout. Um, never get too high. Never get too low. Um, if, if, if I was playing tiddlywinks every single day, I would be the best tiddlywink player that I could possibly be. Um, if that was my jam, that's what I love to do, then that's what I would do. I love to sell stuff on eBay. I love to resell. I love to buy stuff, sell it to someone else. That's what I love to do. If I didn't love to do that, I would not do it. Believe me, I would do something else. I love to sell stuff. I love to talk about selling stuff. That's why I do these lives. That's why I run the channel. I love to help other people. I love to help other people make money. And when you do stuff that you love to do, I wake up every single day. I might be one of the luckiest people in the entire world. I wake up every single day and have for a very long time and do exactly what I want to do and don't have to answer to nobody anywhere. And it's very, very hard to get burned out when you do what you love to do. So from the time I wake up to the time I go to sleep, seven days a week, I get to choose what I want to do and I only do what I love to do. So for better or for worse, it's all gas, no brakes. Um, but I've never suffered from the burnout. So if you are in the chat and you have suffered from the burnout, post some tips for um, our good friend BTG in the chat. How did you get past the burnout stage? How did you overcome it? Are you in burnout now? What are you going to do about it? I think, you know, if if we're ever to the point where we are burned out, it, it's it's just going back to the fundamentals. It's going back to the fundamentals of, you know, how can I get out of this rut? And usually it's about taking action, you know, taking action, one listing at a time, one step at a time, one bite at a time. It's just going back to the fundamentals, back to the basics, one at a time. Um, but a lot of people go through it. I get it. It's tough. Life is tough. The world is tough. Um, it's just all about one one step at a time. Back to the basics. Mike says, seems to me that Macari wants to grow their platform by enticing more sellers to list from other platforms. Very interesting. Okay, so here's another question for you guys. What's more important to a platform? More sellers or more buyers? What is more important to a platform? What say you? 
More sellers, more buyers. What is more important to a platform? More sellers, more buyers. I want to hear your opinion. Sandra says she's been watching all the videos. Great information. I appreciate that. Um, Bygone says they need to improve their process so it isn't my pain point and don't get overwhelmed. Absolutely. Lord of the Things says 15% fees on eBay is bad. It should be a fixed cost. That's Lord from the Fees or Lord of the Things chiming in. Very good. If you had to only choose one, only one way to source, what would you choose? Easy. Flea market. Every single day, I would do flea market. Is there a way to clear your entire store without discounting more than, than 50%? Sure. If you have great items, you may only have to discount 5%. Um, you can run auctions. You can take all that stuff down, sell it locally on Facebook. You can even sell it on Macari. There's no fees. Sell it on Macari, no fees, and let's see if you find a buyer for it. Let, let's see if, if a buyer wants to pay your fees. You could put all of your entire store on Macari and see if a buyer wants to pay your fees for it. That could be a great thing for you to do, great thing for you to try. You can run an aggressive auction. Um, you can increase promoted listings. You can run an aggressive markdown promotion sale. Um, you could do aggressive offers to watchers. You could take everything down, sell it on Facebook Marketplace on a lot. You can sell it on Macari, no fees. You could take it behind the barn. You can redonate it. There's a lot of things for you to do. Um, free returns versus customer pay returns. Can you explain how I can benefit from free returns? Absolutely. I've done it a couple times already. Third time is the charm. If you are able to achieve one day handling time and free returns, you will be top rated plus. Top rated plus has increased visibility in search, meaning higher search visibility. You get the top rated plus badge. You get a 10% discount on final value fees, ability to withhold up to 50% on all returns. You do get some feedback protection. And you also do get the buyer not incentivized to open a false item not as described. There is no reason for a buyer to open up a false item, descri item as described if you have free returns. They don't have to do it to force the return. They don't have to do it to force a label. And if they do, you report the buyer, you, with, you withhold the, the original or you withhold the shipping costs. eBay's crack staff of highly trained individuals will look at it and they will remove the defect if they see fit. So I have no downside, zero downside into free returns. I think it is a beautiful thing because it is the best for the customer. And if we are looking for the best for the seller rather than the best for the buyer, I think you're looking at it backwards. Uh, major win eBay 199 super chat. Very much appreciated. However, not required at all. Happy to be here. Happy to help. Happy to answer the questions. Um, they say, thank you for the many years of good info. My pleasure. Thank you for accepting the information. Um, CJ said, you pick up tons of hats. How do you clean them? We throw them in the washer, reshape, throw them in the dryer, reshape real quick. Very, very careful of wool hats. Those will shrink. Very, very careful of red and white that will bleed on each other. Um, Block says, appreciate the respect that you show the vendors at the flea market. Are you listing on eBay the items that you find in the flea market? I am not. Um, I wholesale all that stuff to other buyers. So when I got, you know, $5,500 worth of Lily Pulitzer and Lululemon, that's already been sold to someone else. They can make the money. I just do it for educational purposes to show that it can be done everywhere. It can be done anywhere. It can be done with no advantages. All you need knowledge and you need to know how to do it. That's it. Sasha Jones, hot take right here. Hot take from Sasha Jones. Macari shift in fees is last ditch ever to keep itself relevant. Hot take from Sasha. Agree or disagree? What does the chat say? Macari shift in fees, last ditch effort to keep itself relevant. Hot take. I like it, Sasha. Um... Eric says, eBay might get a boost now that Macari is charging buyers the fees instead of sellers. Tina, unless if Macari limits the number of returns a buyer can submit, similar to what many retailers are doing now, I don't know if they'll go down that path quite yet. 
Um, Random Stock says, serious question. Do you relax or are you go, go, go all the time? Kind of just one speed all the time. I'm just me, man. I don't, I don't, when, when I need to take it easy and relax, I do, but usually I'm all gas, no brakes. Uh, there is a delay in prices catching up to support new fees. Example, McDonald's has new fees. They pay their employees more now, so now they charge more for the Big Mac while we're still buying the Big Mac. That works because McDonald's is the king, but they are not on a marketplace competing with a million other sellers. The market is the market. The market is undefeated. The market will always be the market. And as supply, it's classic supply and demand, as more of a particular item becomes available, the price will come down. So for the last couple of months, the hottest sell-through I've ever seen in my entire life is Rollback. Rollback Golf has a like 600% sell-through. That's because it's a very new brand. It's very hot. It's very sought after. Mark my words, put it on the chat right now, 8.46 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on March the 27th. Revisit this in one year. Rollback will not be the same as it is right now. There's a lot of brands that have done this. Once upon a time, Untuck It had the same exact sell-through and the same exact um, resale value, resale price as Rollback did. Now Untuck It is much more saturated. Before that, it was Mizzen and Maine. Mizzen and Maine had a fantastic sell-through, great price. As it becomes more saturated, more available, as people start donating it more and as people start listing it more, it's supply and demand. So with Roback, there are more buyers than what's available. As soon as that starts to even out, it'll turn into a 90-day sell-through. Once the supply exceeds what the demand is, then the price is going to go down and that sell-through is going to expand. So nurse with a purse. I think added buyer fees on Mercari will turn off buyers. As a seller, I am happy to pay fees to sell my items. I do not think passing the fees on buyers will retain buyers. And that goes back to our question. What is more important for a platform? More buyers or more sellers? What is more important to a platform? Jewel says, do people really measure their torso, arm length, pit to pit when shopping clothes? Some do, especially vintage folks. Vintage folks do measure it. They know their measurements. They know, hey, I'm 27 and a quarter length and this shirt is 26. It's not going to fit. Some people do. Most people don't. If you ever get a question that says, I don't know my measurements, say, hey, pull out your favorite shirt from your closet, measure it and compare it with the listing and see if it's going to fit you. PNP says they can't believe they caught a live. I appreciate you being here. Every single Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern, we rock and roll. Philly Flipper says, I am extremely polite and extremely good looking. I appreciate that, Paul. Remember, this is the guy who wants to take me for a sunset on the west coast of Florida. So you got to watch, Paul. My wife's in the chat, Paul. Will Yum Yum says, do you have employees who list for you? How do you set a quote on how many should be listed? I am an everything seller, so it's not, so it's kind of tough. Absolutely, it is. So if you go back to my very first video on YouTube, it's not that far. My very first video on YouTube, I do an entire walkthrough of the warehouse. I show the setup at the peak of my eBay business, $2.5 million a year, 50,000 items, listing 250, selling 250. I had three people that photoed. And those same three people did the listings. If you go back all the way to the first video, I show my entire setup of the entire warehouse. Can you go into detail of your schedule when listing 120 per day, taking pics, finding 120 timeframes? Um, so Carrie, Carrie at home, you can find her YouTube channel. She's been in the group since the very beginning. Her second year on eBay, she, she already got past five years of mistakes. All she does is just the right thing. She she joined the group immediately once she started reselling. Second year of reselling, $250,000 in sales. She was able to bring her husband home. Now her husband and her, they both work on the business. So Carrie at home, she just started her YouTube channel. Check her out. She has a video of her doing what my day used to be. And it comes out to between 14 and 16 hours a day. So before she made that video, we got together. I gave her the timeline, told her everything. This is what you got to do. This is what I did. This is how I did it. She did it. She recreated it. 
check out that video. She did a great job. She did it justice. Um, but the timeline is um, I usually woke up at four o'clock in the morning, checked everything, got eBay started, went to the warehouse, got everything picked and packed, made sure I was the first one at the thrift store at 8 a.m. Some days the stores opened up at nine. It just depended on the route. Um, hit a thrift route, picked up my son from school, hung out with him, do whatever we had to do, baseball practice, whatever, took photos, and then I listed late into the night. Um, a lot of that time, it was 16, 18, 20 hours a day. I don't sleep very much, so um, you know it worked around the schedule that I needed at the time, but it was pretty much um, bell to bell, open to close, you know, dealing with eBay, dealing with a kid, um, you know, running a business, but I, I was making fantastic money, and Never went to college. That was my best opportunity at the time. So, you know, I, I I love to be productive. I want to be productive. I want to move forward. I want to do stuff. I love, you know, to sell stuff. I love to be involved in stuff like that. So, like, I, I just love to do it. It, it. it was not a big feat. Carrie did it. She's still alive. She's still breathing. She's still selling items. She made it. If she can make it, we all can make it. So Carrie did it. She did it for one day. I would like to see Carrie do it for one month. It might age her a little bit during that time. Carrie, if you're out there, do my entire routine for one month. That might be a million view video by then. Um, but it, it, it was pretty much all day between that family. It was pretty much all consuming. I, that's what it was. But that's what I wanted to do. If I didn't want to do it, I wouldn't do it. That's what I wanted to do. Um... So grandma's attic, they have a hot take. I think they will lock everyone in and then hit them with the fees. Is Macari attempting to do a rug pull? Is Macari going to get all the resellers on Macari? And are they going to pull the rug and then start charging? Grandma's attic, hot take right there. Are they setting everyone up for the rug pull? Um, Brand... Brand Dozer says they are programmer seller. I'm working on new software for inventory and cross listing. Is there anything you wish systems like that had? Um, I've never cross listed before, so I'm not the right person to ask, unfortunately. Um, Jewel says, didn't they always allow returns? I, I I saw everywhere on the internet that that was the biggest stink that sellers were having that now people can return items. So I've never personally sold on Macari. It's just big news flavor of the day. And let's face it, we're just riding the wave. Um, oh, Miss Lachey, good one. Controversial. Be interesting to know how many people in the chat currently sell on Macari. Oh, controversial right there. Are we just talking that talk? And we are not even Macari sellers, but we have the opinion on Macari. Like I said, I don't even sell on Macari. Are the people in the chat Macari sellers in the first place? Good one. Good one, good one, good one. I talked to somebody today that they have a store with several thousand items on eBay. Once upon a time, they had their entire store cross-listed to Macari. Sold thousands of dollars on eBay. Sold $150 a month on Macari. Thousands on eBay, $150 a month on Macari. All right. So Adis Adis said they're just now reading the Macari message, and now it says there are free returns. Oh, boy. You guys got a lot of takes on Macari. Alfonso says Macari has a three-day window of returns. It's better than eBay's 30-day returns. Alfonso, agree or disagree with, our, with Alfonso? Alfredo saying, does eBay make a move and buy Macari? Grandma's Attic says, I have old phones without chargers. How can I erase the info or do I just sell them for parts? But I would be scared about the old photos. So you can go on eBay and you can search your phone, whether it's a, 
you know, a BlackBerry 8900, which that's an old phone, but you can search any kind of phone. You can get a charger. They're relatively cheap, three, four, five, six bucks. You can get a charger from eBay, plug it in, delete everything, and then do a factory reset and then sell it. Very good. All right. Frito says platforms need buyers. There could be a million sellers, but if no one is buying, the platform will fold, a.k.a. Macari. Are sellers or buyers more important? How about this? For the guys out there, is a party full of guys a good party? A party of all dudes, is that a good party? That's the equivalent of a platform with all sellers and no buyers. Alfonso says, Macari's move will severely damage Poshmark. Okay. Samantha chiming back. Not really. Poshmark has no returns and people really like the policy and shipping is very easy. Why? I should have titled this. This, this, this is the title for next week. Why are resellers anti-returns? Nobody out there steal my title. You've heard it here first. Timestamp it. 8.56 p.m. Why are resellers anti-returns? Why? Is that in the best interest of the customer? I'll ask you guys. Do you shop places that have no returns? Do you guys shop places that have no returns? Would no returns turn you off as a buyer? No one steal that title. I'm coming with that one next week. Why are resellers anti-return? We don't, we haven't figured out that if we sold it once, we can sell it again. If we sold it once, we can sell it again, guys. Um, Jemmy says, they set aside just to put in draft while watching. They have a vintage... Mattel Magic 8-Ball. Oh, yeah. Ask it a question. Ask it. Ask it. Say, is, no, say, did Makari make the right move? Did Makari make the right move? Ask the Magic 8-Ball. Shape it up. Shake it up and see. Oh, Keen in the chat. My man Keen in the chat. Everyone check out Someone Talk to Keen. Check him out. He has a great YouTube video. I want to get him on the podcast one of these days soon, talk baseball cards. Keen has been with me for six years now, I think. Five or six years. Came from a very small business, very large business, killing it. Shout out to Keen. Someone talk to Keen. Check out his channel. Um, Bygone says, how important is store categories or do most people... Once in a store, use the navigation. I think most people, once in a store, they use the navigation. Um, I don't think custom store categories are super important. The only way to shop from them is to go to a seller's uh, store page, and then you'll be able to see it from there. I don't have them in my store. I just use the default eBay categories. Chat jumped. I almost had you guys beat. I got a long way to go. Oh, my goodness. So the dudes do not want to go to parties with only dudes. So why would sellers want to sell on platforms with only sellers? Why would we want to sell on those platforms? Um... Would what not be a better platform if there were too many, if there were more buyers than sellers? The problem with what not is there are more sellers than buyers. What not cannot attract enough buyers. So when I first started what not, it was three years ago. None of you guys knew about what not. I first started what not three years ago. There were more buyers than sellers, crushed it every single day. Now that there's been more sellers, the market is getting more saturated. There's not enough buyers to keep up with the sellers that are on WhatNot. That's why WhatNot has plateaued, and that's why WhatNot has stagnated for a lot of people. There are more sellers than there are buyers. They cannot get over the hump 
of attracting buyers. And last I heard, their cost for customer acquisition was through the moon. So their cost to acquire a buyer was through the moon. And that's why they have not been able to attract the buyers that they're looking for. Mm. Great questions. Great conversation so far. You guys are doing really, really, really good. Keen says, a party of all dudes is a sports card show. <laughs> good one, Keen. If you're not selling enough to cover a few returns, why do you even resell? Just a thought. We should be able to afford returns that should not sink our battleship. Absolutely. Austin says they have absolutely no problem with returns. Liz says returns don't bother her. But buyers will shy away when they see all the fees. $50 purchase will pay almost $8 in fees on top of shipping and taxes. Thank you, Liz. If reselling was easier, then returns would not be an issue. That's from Samantha. Diamond says, you answered your own question. This is a rhetorical question, Diamond. I already have my answer. I'm just seeing what you guys want to say. You answered your own question because most resellers think of sellers over buyers. Most do, unfortunately. Most resellers think about the sellers. They do not think about the buyers. When you put customer first, your business will change. When you structure your listing, when you pick items, when you run your business customer first, your business will change. Our business is not about us. Reselling is not about us. The platform is not about the sellers. The platform is about the buyers and what is in the best interest of the buyers. When we make that change, that we are here for the buyers, to serve the buyers, for the best interest of the buyers, and we do everything with the buyer first in mind, that is when our business will change. So I was solicited by a company. They wanted me to switch something that I'm doing. And I told them that right now I don't have an answer for them. And they were trying to use their tactics, this and that, to, to kind of get me to commit to give them an answer. And they said, what is holding you up? Is it price? Which is a very old school tactic. Is it price? That is always their go-to. Is it this? Is it that? And what I told them stumped them. I told them, I don't know if your product is best for the customer. And they didn't have anything to say. They had nothing to say. I said, I need to think about if your offer, what you guys are doing, are better for the customer than what I'm doing right now. If it was better for the customer, I will switch. If it is not better for the customer, I will not switch. Even though making this switch would save me probably $100,000, it is not better for the customer. Therefore, I did not switch. So when, if we can get into the mind state that reselling is not about us, eBay is not about us, what we do, we work for the customer. We do not work for us. The customer is our boss. The customer is golden. The customer should be protected at all costs because every single time a reseller, an eBay seller, someone anywhere across the internet does bad business on eBay.com and a customer gets burned, that customer does not come back to the platform. And every single time a customer does not come back from the platform, that is bad for us. That is bad for us. They did a study a couple years ago, and this is one of the studies that I remember the most. When a customer leaves a negative feedback as their last feedback, those customers are 75% less likely to come back to eBay or refer somebody else. When a customer leaves a negative feedback, they had a bad experience, they are less likely to come back to the platform. When you go to Taco Bell and they take an hour to cook your food, are you more or less likely to go back to that Taco Bell? If they do that enough times, enough buyers will not go, Taco Bell will close. We all have a responsibility to do what is in the best interest of our customer. Accurately describe the item. Ship it on time as we say. 
Take it back if there's an issue. Practice good customer service. Respond immediately. Answer the question. Solve the problem. Accept the return. Give a refund. Apologize even if it's not your fault. We are performing a retail job with retail duty. If we do not have customers on the platform, every single person in this chat will be going out and going to get a job. If we do not learn to protect the customer, that we are working for the customer, that the customer is the most important part of our business, we will go out and we will get jobs, like it or not. But I have always run my business on what is in the best interest of the customer. I run the Patreon. What is in the best interest of the customer? Every single aspect of my life is what is in the best interest of the customer. And if you are not customer facing, customer first, then you are doing a disservice to your business and yourself. So resellers who don't wanna take returns, that's bad for the platform, that's bad for the customer. I would not shop at a place that had a bunch of signs that say no returns. Imagine shopping online where you can't even see the item and you have to wait for it in the mail and it's still no returns. I'm not a buyer for that person. And if you wanna have no returns, no problem. You can run your business as you see fit, that's fine. That, that, that is an option on eBay, you are more than welcome to do it. But just understand that eBay will allow the return because eBay has in their mind, they are mindful of the customer. We have to be mindful of the customer. So as far as the fees go, are no seller fees bad for resellers? I would rather pay more in fees for more traffic than no fees for less traffic. The amount of traffic that Macari gets compared to eBay is incomprehensible. eBay dwarfs the amount of traffic that Macari gets. I would not spend a single second of my life listing items on an inferior platform that gets one one millionth of the traffic that eBay gets. I would never spend an ounce of my time doing that. I will gladly pay for the traffic for the exposure rather than not pay for no traffic. So if they have took away all the seller fees today, how many people jumped on Macari and listed a bunch of items today? Nobody. Not a single person. Bonanza has had less fees for the longest time. How many people are on Bonanza crushing it? Bonanza has had less fees for over 10 years. Point out the person who's crushing it on Bonanza right now. Point them out. We'll wait. Bring them to the chat. Point out the person who's crushing it on Bonanza right now. Where are they at? They're nowhere because Bonanza has no fee, no, no, no traffic, no exposure. They're nowhere. Why do we want to go places where there's no traffic? As the old saying goes, if it is free, you are the product. So by Macari doing free fees, sellers are the product. Why would we go somewhere put all of our attention, all of our focus, save pennies instead of make dollars. I hope, I prayed that I would have $1 million in eBay fees. Do you know how much money you have to sell to have $1 million in eBay fees? I, I, I loved when my eBay fee was through the roof. You know how, how much money I made and how much stuff I sold my eBay fee was through the roof? I would love to have a million dollars in fees. I would love it. We have to be customer first. We have to focus on the customer. If we do not focus on the customer, we are not looking in the right direction. Don't get blinded by no fees. You can have no fees and no traffic. Go for it. I'll pay fees for the traffic for the exposure. All right. Nick says, would you be coming to Jacksonville for a trip? I'll go up there one of these days. 
Zoran says, question about returns. Do you refund them, including shipping used to ship the item out? I am new, have only been refunding the item's cost without shipping. So there's two ways of returning the item. One is item not as described. One is buyer's remorse. For item not as described, such as item not as described, um, not as pictured, arrived damage, broken, missing parts or pieces, you have to refund the original shipping costs and the cost of the item. You have to make them full and whole 100%. For buyer's remorse returns, such as wrong size, didn't fit, found a better price, changed mine, you can withhold the original shipping and refund only the cost of the product. Oliver says, thank goodness eBay charges fees. They use our fees for more buyer acquisition and marketing. I'll pay them all day if they can keep getting more customers. Oliver, my man, I know you crush it. You've been crushing it for a long time. You got the right idea. You got the right idea, my friend. All right, where are we at? All right, let me jump over to Instagram because I asked over there on my profile right at the top. I have tech tips for resellers right here at the top. I get some helpful tips in there, um, but I asked for some questions over there. So we have questions over there. What comes first in title for sportswear, team name, or brand? So in the sportswear category, the team name acts like the brand. So it does come first. So it would be Miami Dolphins shirt. Um, how do you do your stock take? For me, since everything is chronological in order by date, I look at my oldest items and see if they're still on the platform. Um, do you have a phone number for eBay? I have a serious problem. If you go to your draft screen on the bottom um, right hand corner, they have a floating question mark. You can type in there and then they can give you a phone number. Um, do you sell any clothes or hats new with tags internationally? I list my items as pre owned. Um, do you use a spreadsheet? If show what info was on it? Absolutely. I use a spreadsheet. Um, I track a whole bunch of stuff. I think the most important thing for most people to track on a daily basis would be number of items listed, number of items sold, um, gross sales, gross profit. Million dollar question right here. Will you move to Macari now that they're selling, now they have zero selling fees right here? The answer is no, not doing it. Um, do you think about seasonality when picking up sports items? I do not. Um, so right here, if you want to get involved in that, I share some tips, tech tips for resellers right here on the Instagram machine. Ask questions over there, answer questions over there. You want to hop in, hop in. Happy to have you over there. All right. Where are we at? Where are we at? Um, I almost caught up with the chat, guys. There was a couple questions on the community tab, too. Let me not forget about those folks to give you guys some time to beat me in the chat. Otherwise, this show is over. Once I beat the chat, it is a wrap. On the community tab, we have, should I offer free shipping on items or is calculated shipping the way to go? Um, free shipping is category dependent. If you're selling a widget like an iPhone cable, probably should offer free shipping. Um, calculated shipping can um, kind of bloat your shipping costs because it is going to overcharge the buyer. I believe in doing a flat rate shipping cost, figure out how much your labels are going to cost. Um, and then figure out your price based on that. That's what I would do. I would do flat rate. I don't do calculated because we look at it in the group all the time. Someone will go, hey, I have these shoes. Why aren't they selling? And then that person lives in California. I live in Florida. I look at the shoes. It's charging me $36 to ship the shoes, which those shoes can ship for $7.14 with ground advantage cubic. So that is why buyers are not buying it because the calculated shipping charge has boosted you out of what the item is worth. All right. Where are we at? I almost beat you guys. It, it it's it's just about done. What do you do with items that don't sell even if it's listed at five price five dollars with good pictures? The item is cake toppers. Um so for those items if it's not gonna sell um, you could take it off of eBay. You can try to sell it locally on Facebook Marketplace. Throw it on Macari, no fees. Um, maybe you have a garage sale once a quarter, once a year. Maybe you go to the flea market once a quarter, once a year. Um, 
try to sell it to someone else or you can donate it, anything like that. Um, can you explain how to combine shipping? Does immediate payment have to be disabled? Um, for best results, you have to go to site preference, shipping preferences, all the way on the bottom, there's a checkbox that says um, require immediate payment for best offer. If you uncheck that, then it will give you the ability to send invoices. But eBay is working on that for the last week or 10 days where they have removed the invoice selection from the dropdown of, of awaiting payment. It was removed for like a couple of days. The only way to find it now is to go to order details, top right, use that drop down, and then you can send an invoice there. So I think eBay's eBay's playing with something when it does come to that. But um, if you turn off immediate payment for best offer, that will bring it over there to awaiting payment. And then from there, you can send the invoice. You can also do um, a, a shipping discount on the promotion screen and set it up that way too. Um. Where are we? Um, when you do average cogs, do you factor in gas? Where are we? When you do average cogs, do you factor in gas plus supplies and such? Or are those separate? Um, it depends on how you want to do it, but you just have to find a way to do it and then don't change that way. So for me, those are separate line items. So gas is a separate line item. Supply is a separate line item. Poly bags, boxes, et cetera. That's a separate line item. So cost of goods for me is just strictly the cost of the item. Maxwell said he specializes in true vintage clothing. Can you think of a creative way to source super old inventory? You want a creative way? You got to go to the bandos. That's the most creative way to find super old pre-1960. You got to hit the bandos. Um... Do you ship using all carriers? I usually use USPS, and then for the heavy stuff, I use FedEx, and then for the pallets, I use Southeastern. Um, with FedEx, you got to be a little bit careful. I always add one inch to every single corner, and I add one pound to the weight. They said, what is, a ban what is a bando? You guys don't know what the bando is? Who knows what a bando is for the guy who wants pre-1960s? Who knows what the bando is? <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Uh, do you block buyers who never pay? I do not. Um, what is a bando? You guys don't know what a bando is? That's the question right there. <laughs> a bando is an abandoned house or an abandoned city, an abandoned town. If you go on YouTube, they probably have a bunch of guys finding old clothes in abandoned buildings. They're usually like in the southwest or... In, in the Midwest, kind of mining towns, places that are, are no longer, people go into these abandoned cities, they find clothes. That, that's where they find like Levi's in the old shaft mines. Um, they find Levi's with candle wax still on it because they used to light the tunnels with candles. Um, so if you want pre-1960s, you got to go in there to the bandos, go in there to the private properties, the abandoned houses, the... Um, the abandoned cities. Go go on Instagram. You'll see it. Go on uh, go on YouTube. They got people who source in the mine shafts, source in the forgotten cities, the forgotten towns, and all they do is find old stuff because those places people have moved past, moved along, and no one ever, no one lives there anymore. So they just go in there and they find the old stuff, and that's their business model. I personally cannot give any sort of recommendation to going into private property, going into a private city. I'm not giving that official recommendation. I am waiving all liability when it comes to that. It is at your own risk. You may get arrested. Those guys do get arrested from time to time. Um, but you asked for a creative way, the most creative way. I gave it to you. So thank you, everybody, for hanging in here. I appreciate it. We touched over 600 people. We did not beat the record. The record is 661. But I felt like this was a beautiful chat, great chat, great input from you guys in the comments below. If you can't attend, I answer every single question you guys have. Always answer every single question, every single comment. Always, always, always. Um, what is your opinion? Are no seller fees bad for resellers? What is your opinion in the comments? I want to hear from you. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate everybody for hanging in here. This was a great chat today. If you enjoyed it, share the stream, please. If you enjoyed it, tell your friends, tell your family, tell someone else that resells. All I want to do is help folks. All I want to do is get good information. That's all I want to do. And I appreciate all you guys who come here every single week.
Thank you, everybody. As always, be great.